Our goal tonight is to remember the bravery of those who fought at D-Day through their own words, both allied and German. Understanding of military history can only occur if we examine the experiences of those involved on both sides. Tell me what happened on the 6th of June. We got into our cockpits about 6 that morning and sat there and waited. No orders came to fly. We were frustrated and anxious. A lot of planes were now going overhead. It was rather gray, damp morning, and the Allied planes' exhaust stood out brightly in the murky sky, and we just sat there. In the end, in mid-morning, three of us were ordered to take off and fly to the coast near Khan as an armed reconnaissance patrol. Reconnaissance with a fighter? Was uh, ME-109 suitable as a uh, reconnaissance aircraft? No, 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 it was completely useless. Visibility was very limited forward because of the engine cowling. You had to dive on anything to see it. We had no bubble canopy, so we couldn't see behind us, and the wings obstructed our view to the side, and our planes had no radio communication to our base. We could only speak to each other. So you would have to survive the mission and return to give any report. My name is Charles Dalton. I was a 34-year-old major commanding B Company, the Queen's Own Rifles of Canada. My brother, Elliot Dalton, commanded A Company on my right, you know. I was one of 14,000 Canadians who landed in Normandy on Juno Beach on D-Day. I joined the Canadian Corps of the Queen's Own when I was 15 years of age. Of course, you're always frightened, no question about that, you know, so I kept thinking, what I'm really worrying about is whether I'm going to survive, but I've no choice about this thing. So the important thing is that I can give the leadership they're expecting from me because I have their lives in my hand. If I make the wrong decision, we'll all end up being killed or wounded for sure. And if I don't make any decision, we'll have the worst case of all, you know. So I better just get on with the idea of doing the best job I can and forgetting about whether I'm going to be sacrificed as we land on the beach. Dwight Eisenhower is as right today as he was on the June the 6th when he wrote to the 175 soldiers, sailors, and airmen amassed for the largest invasion in history. The eyes of the world are upon you. Thank you very much. <laughs>